Hey, y'all, Mr. Bergman here. Um, one of the things I love about the projects that I assign in my class is that they give you an opportunity to practice giving STEM presentations. And a really important idea in, in STEM presentations is telling the research story. Now, it's going to be kind of formulaic and, and uh, the same, kind of the same way in my class. Um, not a whole lot of variation, especially uh, from chapter three on. You, you, telling the research story is going to look a very certain way. But when you get out into college, when you get to um, you know whatever nonprofits or startups or whatever it is you're going to, going to be doing after, after you leave my class, uh, telling the research story is going to be a little different. Um, but you have to talk about from the start to finish, you know, what do you, what are you given at the very beginning? What were you handed? What kind of tasks or questions or messy data you were, you were given with? And then how did you start to process it and, and what did that look like? And then after, you know, where do we go with this? And what recommendations do you have for people who come after you in, in whatever context? So tell the research story from start to finish. Uh, here's what that looks like in my particular class. It's not going to look like this when you get to the real world, but this is what I want you to do. Um, there's going to be five basic areas. First of all, start with your givens. Secondly, talk about your variables. Third, equations and regressions. And then fourth, you remember a full graphical analysis. That's where you talk about the domain and the range and the vertical line test and all that stuff. Uh, I want you to do full graphical analysis uh, on uh, in your project because you have a graph and we have we need to practice these concepts and then um and then i want you to analyze the actual event that occurred uh all of the projects from here on out are going to be analyzing actual events and real data so i want you to now analyze the event and i want you to do this all within the genre of stem presentation so make sure you round your numbers and report units if there are units and make sure that you have not too not too much on a slide. Um, make sure you have, you know, just when, when I say not too much, it's not crowded. It only has one idea with a title and a, and maybe some text and a picture and a number and a result. And that's, you know, not too much. That's the genre of uh, STEM presentation. So first of all, you're given. So there's a beginning situation or maybe data information. I want you to talk about what you're handed and given at the very beginning. Next, variables. Uh, on uh, maybe, maybe when you when you get out there in the real world there might be different kinds of axes there might be three-dimensional you know, graphs that you have to present or whatever but i want in my class i want you to talk about the x-axis versus y-axis and the and so therefore what is independent and what is dependent and uh lastly when it comes to these variables i want uh units wherever possible wherever meaningful Units are incredibly powerful storytelling aids, and they help describe exactly what's going on. And so, yes, please report units whenever you can. Um, mathematicians are actually notorious for uh, not considering units, and so I want you to make sure, I want to make sure that you get in the habit of reporting units whenever possible. Third, then you talk about any equations or functions or regressions that you are utilizing. Um, starting in chapter three and later, uh, you need to do three different parts. There needs to be consideration for R squared values. Um, and then what is the shape of the graph? And then are there any science equations or geometric formulas that you're using? So how did you choose your regression? Well, there are three different conversations you need to have R squared conversation, a shape of a graph conversation, and a science equation or what you know, formula conversation. Full graphical analysis. So you'll have a graph and you need to analyze it fully. And if you need to uh, refer to that, I, I highly recommend you do that, especially at least the very last slide or one of the last slides where I have a full summary of all like the different um, 17 different things that, that come with full graphical analysis. Then after that, there's an event analysis. Are th is there any meaning? So at this point, you're actually going to start really tackling the actual event that, that occurred, and you're going to analyze and, and and talk about what's going on and make and you know predictions and applications and all that. So first of all, any of the special points or lines, the um, the vertex or the axis of symmetry or the or point of rotation or the asymptote, do any of those special points or lines have any actual meaning in the context of the real 
event that actually occurred. Does the y does the y intercept mean anything? Does the x intercept mean anything? What is the meaning of any special points or lines? Next, what can you discard? Um, there, there might be mathematically we might be able to trace out the graph, you know, to all corners of the uh, of the viewing window, and you might be able to see quite a bit. But actually, there might be actually a lot of the graph that you can discard when you consider the context of the actual event or the story that you're trying to tell. Does it? I mean, negative numbers are uh, are classic in this. Like, do, does a negative five at x equal negative five have any meaning in the actual story when that when the event starts at x equals zero and goes to positive numbers? So are, is there anything you can just to discard and, and talk about that and report that in, in interval notation? Next, there might be a central question that I give, um, and I want you to answer it and, and you know fully talk about this, the answer to that central question. Next, um, are there any applications to the to this to the research that you're doing to professionals? Like where in the in the broader context of the STEM field or when humanity uh, or professional workplace are you, does this belong? So who who would care about your results? Uh, and then E, get curious. I want you to um, I want you to think about you know there's so often in, in in school we kill curiosity and just ask you to do as i am doing right now i'm asking you to do like a list of things and i want you to consider these things but then also let's let's make room for curiosity and for um for creativity and i want you to think i want you to get curious and write your own related question so not a central question but like what else what else can you consider about this get curious write your own related question and then um and then answer as best you can and i might give you some other related questions not a central question but like other side questions i want you to answer so that's um that's the event analysis and um and i hope that this that you can take the math and not just add, you know I, I don't want you to just do math on graphs i want you to talk about what it looks like in the broader story so that's it for telling the research story, at least in my class, and I hope when you do this, you'll practice it and you'll get good at telling the research story whenever you have a story to tell researchers. Thanks, take care, and I'll see you in class.